So we were talking about Steve Kerr and maybe if his message is starting to fall on deaf ears. It seems like he still has the veterans and the vet- veterans still swear by Steve Kerr. Now, when it comes to lineups, Steph Curry yesterday after shooting around in Oklahoma City said this about the lineups. Listen to Steph and Curry. It's about 90 seconds long. I think it's still a little early to have to kind of look at the overall playbook and say stuff doesn't work and like throw stuff out just because we haven't had a constant stretch of the same unit together to try to get those reps. I think we're getting close to that. Obviously, GP being out, but you know, every team wants to be at full strength for a certain period of time so that you can get all the looks out there and figure out what works, what doesn't work, what lineups work together. I know Coach talked about that last night. Uh, we're still trying to form an identity with that, but there's a understanding that the learning lessons like the Clipper game, you could argue we were a little bit too pick and roll dominant down the stretch just because they were clearly just trying to take me out of uh, the equation on that front. We didn't have, it was very reminiscent of like the Lakers series where you didn't have um, a change up pitch. So just making sure we uh, take stock of where games started to get out of hand or our offensive flow started to get a little junky just because, you know, we started to do certain like a certain look over and over again um, and figure out a way to put ourselves in a position where we have a tight playbook come, you know, the stretch run that we can rely on. So continuity. Continuity seems to be the thing. They want to see continuity. That's Stephen Curry right there yesterday after shooting around saying, it's too early to panic about the lineups. But as Yogi Berra said, it gets late early, right? And you're 21 games into the season. You're two games, one game under 500. Continuity, How, continuity the might not. Continuity might not happen. Okay, just just very quickly. Like I don't. I love Steph. That's a word salad that I don't subscribe to. You know why? Because continuity. The the same group of guys, five guys that played together for quite a while: Looney, Wiggs, Clay, Draymond, and Steph. That that five man unit. It's not the end-all, be-all, but they've played enough basketball together. They just don't look good. They just don't look good. It, it, like, you could tell me all about continuity. If they were, like, incorporating multiple new players into that particular lineup, I would listen to it. Like, CP3 and the various lineups with him or, or Saric or whatever and the different combinations, I'll listen to it. But, like, w- what is the reason for that five-man unit not playing well? well? Continuity just, is not the reason. Well, I just think it's also he's saying it's too early to panic about the lineups because guys haven't been there, right? Draymond Green hasn't been there half the year. CP3. I'm just trying to figure out what Stephen Curry is trying to say there. Now, I do think there needs to be some adjustment. But let's hear from Steve Kerr. Let's hear well, from Because as a player, I get why Steph would say that. Look, man, I haven't had Draymond Green. He was popped for five games. He missed the first two games. He missed a personal game against Denver. Like, that's eight games he's missed. I don't know. Um, Andrew Wiggins. Two games he missed after playing very well in Sacramento. Damn. Chris Paul gets hurt when Draymond Green comes back from the five-game suspension. You know, Kaminga and company have been in and out of the lineup. He's missed two games himself, so I get why he would say that as a player. Well, and I also know that, like, everything Steph says is he understands it'll be curated by the media and, and ran with, and so he's very calculated in what he says, and he's not trying to give anyone anything. Like, I understand that. but His overall theme is basically saying, I look, I'm not going to panic 21 games in. Understandable, and and I would say that I would say to him that like he has a a blessing and a curse. Like I understand that my blessing and my curse is my mouth. There are times where it has really helped me out, and there are times that it buries me. Right, and I understand that. There are times where where Steph Curry's nice guy thing is amazing. It's like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, it's amazing, and we all love it, and we're jealous, we're envious of how nice of a guy he is. And there are other times where I'm like, dude, you need to put your that, thumb on the scale. But, but no, but that's what the players do. Player and a player like Stephen Curry's not going to rip his teammates in public at all. And he's not, not going to make demands publicly for us to, yeah, Steph, no, that's what we're going to do. I don't think uh, that's what Behind I'm the saying. scenes, maybe he's saying something differently. Behind the scenes, maybe he is, but he is a player. And that's how players think sometimes. It's like, look, we're going to figure this thing out because we believe we're good. That's the ego within them. That's the cockiness within well, them. I, that's the confidence that's got them to this level. They're winning four championships. But there's now, a time and play. a place to be... Slightly well, got, more cutthroat. Well, and I would say that, like, that, when you That's look not at, it yesterday. I don't no, think no, no, that's no. it. No, 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 I'm not saying that's it. I'm just saying overall. I'm just 
I'm just going big picture. Maybe he's Not being tomorrow. cutthroat. Maybe he's being cutthroat behind the scenes, and we just don't know about it. I don't know, but I don't know if we want him to be pu- cutthroat in public. Well, you got no, another thing not, coming. Not, not cut though in public, right. but I can sense a, a a growing frustration from him on the court. No doubt. It feels like the game has gotten harder for him in terms of getting shots that he needs well, in rhythm. He seems frustrated with certain well, things. Obviously, losing makes guys frustrated. There's just an element where there are times where I wish out loud, like, man, I'd love for him, and he'll never do this. I know he'll never do this. Like, man, I wish he would just be a little more direct the way Kobe would. I wish he'd be a little more direct the way LeBron is. It's just not in his nature. Didn't work well for Kobe his last six years in the league. Oh. You know? Going back to the gift, the the blessing and the curse. Right. It's part of what made Kobe great, and it also made Kobe not liked by a lot of people. I think they could have won eight championships in the 2000s, the Lakers. Bonte, you're you're right. and, and, And the fact that there was insecurities about who's the star and whose team it is and what that. He struggled without Shaq, and they had to go make a, you know, Memphis did that was solid. Like giving a Paul Gasol for Mark Gasol when Mark Gasol was nobody and helped Kobe out, gave him a lifeline there. But it hurt Kobe. And I just don't think that's just Steph's DNA. That's what makes Steph so lovable, right? Um, be, not being cutthroat in public. Now, he did mention late in the Clippers, get, Clippers game, everybody loves to run pick and roll, right? Oh, we need more PR with Stephen Curry. And he mentioned in that clip, I think we were too dependent on the pick and roll because they were blitzing me and doubling me. So we got too dependent on that down in crunch time. And I kind of agree with that. No, it makes no. it easier for the defense to defend. But now I'm going to hear from Steve. Yeah, but, but like, before you move on, like, yeah, I agree with that. And it's also because look who you're playing with. Like, you were the only playmaker on the floor. And they had so, Pajinski like, on the floor at the same time. What? They had Pajinski. No, you were there, talking about the Lakers series. And no, I'm saying, I mean, the Clippers game on Saturday. Oh, Clippers, Clippers game, game okay. on Saturday. So, like, he just mentioned the Clippers game Saturday. Okay. Well, I, I don't know, man. I just, like, you can't have it all your way all the time and then say, oh, shucks. Like, some's got to give. Well, no, he mentioned that pick and roll killed them. He believed that they became. No, but what I'm saying is, is that when, when you're looking at this situation and who you're playing with, like, if you're never going to have any, you know, willingness to move off of the core, well, then this is what you're this is what you're going to be facing. And these are well, you're only limited to do certain well, things. Can you blame them? They lost one Western Conference series under Steve Kerr since Steve Kerr's been head coach. They've lost one series, and that happened last season. I kind of can't blame them for not wanting to move off of Draymond and Clay. They've had a lot of success together. Of course, a they lot have. of success of together. Of course, they have. So you're not going to panic but after lasts one. Forever. Yeah, and no doubt panic. about it. And maybe that's coming next all season. Maybe that's coming next all season. I mean, there but was it's one hard for a player. Game away. It was hard for. But that's what Steph Curry does. We could keep saying, "Well, that's what the great ones do." We can't take away fifty point games. That's that's what that's what makes Steph Steph. Right. That's what makes Kobe Kobe. That's what makes Jordan Jordan. That's what makes LeBron LeBron. They're capable of dropping fifty at any time. Uh, 